Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. This is going to be another PlayStation 5 video around this box and other storage device. So if you've already been watching my channel, you would have seen I've got a few videos on PlayStation 5 features, as well as a couple of videos highlighting the possibility of using more than one drive, which of course doesn't work, and then whether you should use the NVMe or 10 gigabits external drive versus a SATA or 500 megabytes per second SS, conventional SSD. So there wasn't much benefit of using the NVMe or 10 gigabits external drive so far, and hopefully Sony will update this and maybe we'll be able to get more speed out of our external storage for our PlayStation 4 games with a 10 gigabits drive, considering two USB ports at the back of the PlayStation and the USB-C port on the front of the PlayStation does actually support 10 gigabits, which is a nice feature. So let's hope that they can update it to include support for that. And one more thing while we're here and before I start talking about this new enclosure that I have is that I'm currently sitting on about 99 subscribers and if you are enjoying the videos and contents that I'm creating so far around the PlayStation and other technology uh, please feel free to like and subscribe it really does encourage me to continue to make these videos and try and provide value to all of you viewers so let's get started with this video so I have this enclosure this is a dual bay 2.5 inch drive so I like a laptop drive or an SSD drive enclosure. This is actually thicker than usual because I've added some plates and you can see my other video about this enclosure which describes all of that so we're not going to go into too much detail about that but it does have a USB-C connector. Sorry about the bad lighting but I think you can just about see that on the camera and there are four screws you need to unscrew which I've conveniently already unscrewed to show you the inside. So let me just pop the covers off. They literally just slide off like that. So what I've got installed in here so far and I've done this deliberately, I have a SanDisk 480 gigabyte SSD. And on the other side, I have a Samsung Evo one terabyte SSD. Now, why am I using two different drives? Well, I'm doing this just to show you that it is possible to use two different sizes of drives in this type of RAID enclosure. You can also get a desktop RAID enclosure. The principles are the same. So this has some features which you can just about see here on the camera, I believe. Let me try and focus in on that. Okay, it's not the great focus, not the best of light, but basically there's four settings here for the blue jumper at the bottom. Let's see if that helps. Okay, there we go, we can see a lot better now. So these jumpers and these settings are for different settings for your RAID enclosure or dual bay enclosure. So. What does it mean? So basically you can have different configurations. So you can have just a bunch of disks where each drive is separate. That obviously won't work on the PlayStation because it only supports one drive. Then we have RAID 0 and RAID 1. RAID 0 basically means that you can have two disks working together to create one large drive. So for example, if you have two one terabyte drives, you'd get two terabytes of storage and it would increase the throughput. So if you have standard hard drives, it will maximum double that capacity or sorry, double the speed. So if you're getting 150 megabytes per second, you can theoretically obtain 300 megabytes per second. But obviously in the real world, it will be less than that. However, you at least your random access time may increase a little bit and improve the performance of your drives. And if you have two drives lying around, it would definitely help with that. RAID 1 is essentially a copy or a mirror of the two drives, which we won't be talking about in this video because it won't, we won't really benefit anything from that because we're not worried about making sure we have a uh, backup of all of our games all the time because we can download them so we're not really losing much data if our enclosure fails and I know that these sort of enclosures are not to fail. The other options are just a bunch of disks where like I already explained it's individual disks and then you have something called single. So what single means is if I have a 500, 480 gigabyte drive and a one terabyte drive it will create a 1.4 terabyte single drive right. So that's the configuration I have at the moment. And one thing I have noticed in case you, do, you are using this media sonic enclosure is that the jumper settings are incorrect and they are actually reversed for j and single. So you will have to configure them the other way around if you wish to have one drive or two single drives. So let's plug this in. So I've got my USB-A to USB-C cable at the back of the PlayStation 5. The cable's not long enough. I can't show you it turning on properly. Can just about see it there in the corner of the screen. Takes a couple of seconds for this thing to boot up. Once it's on, we should see the lights flash. And there we go. 
So I'm just going to put that down. You may see a sign in a moment on the top right hand corner of the PlayStation screen saying the USB drives file system is unsupported. That's fine. That's because once we first put the drives in and there is actually a button just here next to the jumpers, you have to hold this switch down. Okay. And it will configure the drives for the jumpers that you have. So that's if you're using this media sonic enclosure, other enclosures may be different. So we're going to go to settings and go to storage and make sure that it's detected. So extended storage and you can see it's showing some volume name which is a name given to the device and it says 1.49 TB. So because I've configured it as a single drive, we're able to create one big volume of 1.49 TB. So this is really handy if you have drives of two different sizes. So let's format this as extended storage. Yes. And hopefully this will work properly and it will show that there we go. It's formatted and ready for use for PS4 games on our external storage. So there we go, 1.36 terabytes. Obviously there's some space which is lost uh, for like, well, there's a couple of different reasons. Let's not go into details about that, but basically we now have 1.36 terabytes of storage available. So the, as far as this video is concerned, this will highlight that you can use an external RAID enclosure and you can use multiple drive sizes, you can use conventional drives, you can use SSDs. The benefit of using SSDs if you use it in RAID 0 is that you can theoretically double the speed of your SSD so you can end up with like I think the box advertised 800 megabytes per second and that is obviously going to be amazing if we do ever get the update for the PlayStation to support faster than 500, well 300 megabytes per second or whatever it was we saw in my last video. So now I'm going to, if you want to stop watching here please feel free to stop watching or please feel free to continue watching. I'm going to carry on talking about this RAID enclosure. I'm going to reconfigure the drives and show you working with RAID 0 and how that will impact the storage that's available to you. So if you're going to leave now, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you're going to carry on, let's now talk about RAID 0. So before I configure my bay for RAID 0, I'm going to safely remove from PS5. I highly recommend you do this every time if you're playing with your external storage because you will get a notification, it will scan and rebuild etc 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 so let's safely remove from ps5 click ok and once that's done okay it's done you can remove the drive so i'm going to remove the enclosure and i just want to say i think it was dj dynamite nyc who suggested using a raid enclosure to get more storage so thanks for pointing that out and that's why I've made this video because it is definitely a good option for anybody who has, whether it's a 2.5 or a 3.5 enclosure and you wish to make use of some discs that are lying around, this is definitely a cheap and efficient way of doing it. So I'm going to change the jumpers now to RAID 0, so I have to switch it to 1 and to 2. There we go. So I don't know if you can see it properly there, but I've now changed the switches really having a lot of focusing issues here, but anyway, there it is. So now I'm going to plug it in. Once I've connected it, it will take a few seconds before to recognize the drive. And now before the drive can be used, we will have to hold that switch down because we've changed the configuration of the drives and it does need to write that to the firmware of this enclosure so that it can use the new configuration. Right, the lights are blinking, just about see it there. And you can see that it's already showing. Now, because we haven't held that switch down, it's automatically detected this drive. Now, I'm going to remove again and keep the bay connected so that I can do the configuration because it does require power. So safely remove, okay. Now that it's removed, I'm gonna hold down the switch on the bottom left-hand corner until it flashes. And it's now flashing, so it's configuring the new RAID configuration, which in this case is RAID 0, and that's done. So now, once it's completely stopped flashing, it's automatically recognized the drive. Now, one thing you notice here is, instead of 1.5 terabytes, it's now showing 960 gigabytes. So I'll explain quickly why that is. Because I have a 480 gig drive and a 1 terabyte drive, it's going to use the smallest drive possible and create one volume, which is matching the smallest drive. So we have two times 480 gigabytes instead of two times one terabyte or one terabyte plus four terabytes. We have two times 480 gigs. So if you do end up using two different size drives, you will lose storage from that second drive. However, 
especially if you're using conventional hard drives as opposed to SSDs, the benefit of this is that you will theoretically get double the speed. So it depends what you want. Do you require more storage or do you want more speed? So that's why we talked about the singles configuration and now we're talking about RAID 0 configuration. So in RAID 0, I have 960 gigabytes and you can clearly see it's working exactly as described. So let's do format as extended storage, make sure it works. I'm not going to be doing any speed tests or copy tests in this video. I just want to show you that this enclosure it is possible to use an enclosure like this. And there you go, we have 881 gigs of usable space for our external storage. Right now, while we're here, I might as well show you what it means to use RAID 1. So what RAID 1 does is it makes an exact copy on the two drives. So obviously this is better for backups. It's not really useful here, but we can do that anyway. So let's safely remove again. And now I'm going to chain the jumpers the other way around so that it is on RAID 1. And now that that is done, I'm going to hold the switch again. It's now reconfiguring the drive to the RAID 1 array. And this time we're going to see something completely different in the storage, uh, available storage. And this time you see it's only 480 GBs. Because again, we can't have more than 480 GBs because one of my drives is 480 GBs. So it will again default to the smallest drive and create two copies of that drive, but we will only see one drive. So in this case, we see one 480 gigabyte volume. So I'm going to click format as extended storage. Yes, just want to make sure it works. Okay, and it's done. So we now have 440 gigs available space in a mirrored copy. So each co drive is a copy of itself. It's not really beneficial for the PS5. I wouldn't recommend using it. The only two modes that I would recommend trying are RAID 0 and the single disk. If you want more space, use a single disk. If you want a faster disk, use RAID 0. So, Let's do one more test while we're here. Let's try JBOD. This is probably not going to work. It may only detect one drive. I don't know which drive it's going to detect. I don't know what is classed as a primary drive. One is labeled as HDD1, which in this case is the one terabyte. So let's now change this to just a bunch of disks. So it's the opposite way around. Like I said, the instructions are incorrect. And let's reset again. I don't remove it, made a mistake. So this is the message you'll see if you don't remove the drive. Click OK, click OK, oh, press pre -yes button. Made the video unnecessary longer, something wrong, repairing. OK, OK, let's now safely remove. OK, and let's reset it again to JBOD. And let's see what happens. Okay, configure, and it only sees the 440 gigs, right? So what that means is, is because each drive was a copy of itself, it's still able to see the 440 gig volume on both of the drives. Now, which one it's reading, I don't know. But the bottom line is, it works in all the four configurations. Like I said, I highly recommend using either RAID 0 or single disk. So that can be for 3.5 inch drives or 2.5 inch drives. Obviously the 2.5 inch enclosure is great for SSDs and it makes them a small compact drive. You won't need an external power source. As you can see, I'm not using any external power source. It's just the USB-C cable. So that's where this video is gonna end as far as using a RAID enclosure is, it, is concerned. And I had one interesting question from, I believe the name was Sam Ruth who was asking, um, you know, they had the same, they had an Orico enclosure like I mentioned in my NVMe video. So this is the Orico NVMe enclosure. Let me just quickly slide the cover open so you can see the drive inside. So I have a WD Blue SN550 drive. Sorry about the focusing issues, but the drive is there. So uh, the problem he was having was that it wasn't detecting over uh, USB A to C, right? So I'm going to use my same cable now. So let me remove this storage. Okay, that's done. And let me remove the cable and connect it to my NVMe using the USB-A port to USB-C cable on my PS5. 
and let's see what happens. Okay, so the driver is definitely de detected. So uh, I hope that answers your question about that. And that's it for this video. So I will continue to reply to all of your messages as quickly as I can. Uh, please feel free to like and subscribe like I already explained. It really does encourage me to continue making videos for the community and to provide value to the end users. That really is my end goal. Uh, whatever I do now, I would like to share. Obviously, that would take some time. But uh, for now, thanks for watching. Hope you like this video. Please feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.